First of all, I want to express my sincere appreciation for the opportunity to commune with you again this year. In the past, we we're accustomed to having audience in front of us. Um, getting used to the idea of talking to a machine to, to your people. We're going to start with an explanation of the meaning of the eternal flame. You will see the four laws in the card four cardinal direction around the fire. Those laws represent four races of people. The top log represents all brown people. The brown strip represents all the Indian people. And the bottom log represents the Asian people. The yellow strip represents the Asian people. <clears throat> they say those directions are projected, which is not Indian projection, or it encircles the earth. And the left log represents all the blue people. The blue strip represents all white people. In the ancient times, the white people were known as the blue people. And the right log represents the black people. Early 1900s, my grandfather, Redbird Smith, told people, what we have is a God-given sign for us to keep. We become the caretakers of the sacred fire to be treated in a special way in all respects that we can muster up. This light that we follow, this faith that we have is the biggest thing. It's bigger than any man. And all of those colors representing the four races of people we have been told spiritually that this design the altar of the eternal flame belongs to all mankind the fire many of my ancestors the ancient ones who went before this fire to talk to their people they always addressed the fire as the brown lady of the eternal flame. In that respect, that fire becomes the number one messenger that takes all that we share with her to God the Father. And it also, the fire represents the woman God. Many times, the woman God has been mentioned, but in recent time, with the help of my ability to interpret what my ancestors were doing, I come to believe that fire represents the woman God. When you go there, there's no other reason to be there except to visit this woman God, to give her a message 
so that she can take it to the Father God. In order to really qualify for the message to get home, you must satisfy certain spiritual requirements. You are to use a sacred word that comes from ancient times, a back in time when the Creator lived with people. It was a truly a Garden of Eden. They didn't need for anything. They were like the Creator Himself. That's where some of these special early teachings come from. For example, he gave this separate word, a sacred word to all people, to all people that are represented by the color of the eternal altar of their fire. The word in Turkey sounds like this. A dog a stink. A dog a stink. Which means love and care for yourself. Love and care for your family. Love and care for all people. You must have satisfied those requirements. You truly stand as one with everything from yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That's the only way that you, you can address the brown lady of the eternal plane. If you carry with you some negative thing that you can't get rid of, you block the spiritual contact with the Creator. You must do away with all negative things to really have a functional prayer, you might say, we are a little bit different in the way we present our prayer. We call that a functional process, a functional communion, which means we live what we say. We maintain what we say. We practice what we say. We live in a communion way, which is what functional communion means. Whenever we have the opportunity to have this communion. It can be done anytime. It didn't take a special body action. It only takes a true spiritual belief in what you're doing. The ancient ones, when they practice this, they say they were on the right road. They say that the right road is the white road that leads to the seventh heaven. That's another thing, the early teachings. He told people, all people, that I have provided seven heavens seven dimensions 
and the one who lives by my rule with love and care most of the time while they live on this earth will get to go to the seventh eternal heaven. And those who didn't do so well, who didn't score as well as the first one, will get a reward after death to go to one of those lower dimensions. But they are provided with spiritual life. And they relive in that dimension. They still have a chance to go upward towards the seventh heaven. In that respect, the extra mean people can only go to the bottom heaven. But even then, they still have a chance to go on up towards the highest level. In that manner, we say there's no hell in our culture. There's no eternal death. You only go to the bottom heaven if you didn't do anything good on this earth. When we say that we share love and care, we include, we extend that love and care to the people who passed on no matter where the Creator will give them to go, whatever level of heaven they go, we must still extend love and care to them. We even extend love and care to the unborn that's on their way into this world. For in the beginning of man's life, when a person is born into this world, God gives him special things. He gives us love and care. We always have that. When we commune with him, we commune with him with love and care. We become as close to him as we can get. When we do, we're not only connected to the creator and to the woman God and the child God. We are in touch. We are in contact with the perfect world, the first world, where these early teachings come from. Miracle type things can be experienced if you make that contact with the perfect world. When they were immoral, they were like God. This is what we try to be. We try to be one with that mind, body, and soul, love and care that he gave us. When we do, our help comes from the perfect world through the Creator, through the child God, through the woman God, that will give us assistance in whatever we want to do. We also want to include that the Creator 
advanced <clears throat> the special love and care to the elements that we live by. For example, we are connected to everything by the air that we breathe. All plants, all things from the earth, the air, the water, the heat, and the land. This connection must be confirmed when we do our communion. You are connected by the holy water. You are connected by the fire. You are connected by the soil. Confirmation has got to be done in the state of mind that you stand as one with all creation. The other images I think we can bring on the woman God. One above the up in the darkest hour of my life because of inhuman treatment from people that I respect. Authorization denial, condemned, that gave me the dark hour of my life. I was willing to give up this medicine practice and I addressed the creator that I was going to quit, that I wasn't going to do this anymore because of what happened, that I was ostracized from the family, from the organizational practices, at the point when I said I quit, I don't know when I fell, but when I come to, I was immobile, couldn't even blink an eye. I was truly in denial. I was glad if I was dead, but I wasn't out of the corner of my eye. I saw me standing in the air to my right. And it made me think I'm really gone. I was still in denial. I still invited death. But then the next scene, that one was my spirit had removed himself to stand on a chimney rock. Looked like he was looking, away, looking for a way down. 
and I'm still on my back, and I'm still on that rock. So there's two of me, my physical me and my spiritual me. And a small speck of light appeared in the deep, dark canyon. I right away recognized, I right away knew what it was. I knew what it represented. But I was still in denial, so I thought, I'm not going to watch it. I'm going to let it go away. It didn't go away. It came within about 20 feet of me. At that time, that small light was big, soft white light. The character that you see in this image appeared in that light. And he put out his hand. He took me off of that rock into his hand, he let me down. He taught me early teachings of his to all people. I received the strongest miracle taught communion from this. I thought that was God that pulled me out of it. And I lost all denial. I become well. And from then on, I work to be as close to him as possible. In about seven days, the woman God appeared on my door. At the same time, the child God, which is Christ, appeared. So I understand that if I honor the Father, I honor the child, and I honor the woman God. Same way with the woman God. If I go through with my communion to her, I become one with the male God and the child God. I also have the great gift and opportunity to go and become one with Jesus Christ. And when I do, it also honors the Father and the woman God. This is what the world needs today. We're having all of these difficult problems because people don't care for one another with love and care. We need to return to the original teachings of our ancestors. How much time we got? 15. 15. 15. Many times. When the old people stood before their people to talk about the good things. When they say these images will help us to travel on the good road, on the white road, that will lead to the seventh heaven. My ancestors had a wampa belt that explains in one of the books, a University of Oklahoma professor does a good job on interpreting a belt. And when you're on that road, you fear no evil, but they are with me. Believe it or not, when our ancestors did this, they were using 
John 3.16, before it was ever written into the Bible. So do you do have original teachings from the Creator? Our children, it's not too early for them to hear things like this. They used to have parents talk to their children in that way, in that manner. When they did, the children grew up with an important respect to fit into any walk of life they choose to be in. In the language, the word adage think. If he truly repeated that word to all the people, which we think he did, the beauty part of it is he was speaking Turkey. So therefore, the language classes they have is really good. I commend these people for teaching our children their language. So it gives me a great pleasure to be able to sit here and talk to you about the true things. My father, Stokes Smith, lived and died looking for someone to write about what they believed in. Many, many of those old people couldn't find anyone to do that work for them. They wanted to know how to tell the world the truth of who they were. But they did make an interpretation of their work. And they projected a saying that one day in the future, when we're long gone, someone will come and write and tell the truth to the world how we are. We left Georgia early 1700s because of the inhumane treatment that my people were receiving from the governor of the state of Georgia and all the newcomers. They had been told before they come to this North American continent, wherever they come from, God had told him, when you run into difficulty with others, always move out, move toward the setting sun. They followed the original ancient instruction and they migrated out of Georgia. And they settled somewhere around Van Buren, Arkansas. And the Spaniards had discovered gold before. And the United States government interested in gold, not interested in people, wanted that land. <clears throat> so the original Kituwa people traded that portion of land they lived on, what is now Arkansas, was all the Oklahoma outlet. 
that were doing business with the Texas Cattle Association, leasing land, making money. When the Trail of Tears took place, my traditional Ketuba were recipient, welcome and committed to the people who made the Trail of Tears. So according to certain people, like the former Chief Ross Swimmer, he made a remark about the Kazuwa organization. He considered the Kazuwa to be the right arm of the Cherokee Nation. And he brought out the fact that what we do is our communion. It's our way of visiting the Creator. And W.W. W. Keeler had the same concept of the traditional organization. So it is important that we keep these ancient teachings alive and it'll benefit the kids. And maybe it'll benefit a whole lot of people. I'm, I'm truly happy that I was able to share these things with you. And I look forward to next year, even though I'm pushing 92 years old today, but I still will be willing to share with you. I thank you very much.